Well, in our simplistic view of geometric probability, I want to determine what are the odds that if this point P lands on this figure, that it lands in the shaded region. Now, to be clear, this is not on the figure, so that can't be. It has to be inside the circle. What are the odds that it lands on one of these shaded regions, which we also call segments? Well, um, I think we could see that it has to land on the circle. I want to take away that square. Or, writing it this way, the probability that it lands in the shaded region, that's the area of these segments divided by the area of the whole circle. Okay, well, let's work this out. Now, the segments themselves, as we just said, that's the circle minus the square. And that will give us all four of these segments all added together. So this is pretty straightforward because I've got a uh, radius given of 5. I actually changed it. This is exercise 8, but I changed the radius a little bit. So let's see what we can do here. Hmm. How do I find the square? This is the radius of the circle. It's also the radius of the square. There's a couple ways we could go here because I know that I've got several, uh, well, look at that. Golly, I've got three ways to find the area of the square. It's the side squared. It's one half AP, apothem times perimeter, but a square is also a rhombus, half the product of the diagonals. So let's look at these three possibilities. If I did this, that's what you're used to, I could consider this, hmm, let me see, that would give me the apothem, that would help me with this. Or I could consider this triangle, and then that's pretty straightforward. I could say, oh yeah, this 45, 45, 90, the sides are 5 radical 2. When I square 5 radical 2, I'm going to get 50. Well, you could do that, but honestly, you really don't have to. Let's take the easiest path, and that is, let's not do this. Let's not do this. Let's use the fact that this square is also a rhombus. So it's equal to half the product of its diagonals. And we can see straight away that, well, its two diagonals are, of course, both 10. Oops, messed up there. And um, well, there we go, pi r squared minus one half the product of the diagonals over pi r squared. So let's do our substitution. And we see where this is going. I've got pi r squared, which is 25 pi minus, let me see, I've got a half of 100, that's 50, over 25 pi. Let me write that down over here. Can we simplify this any at all? And I'd have to say the answer is yes. Let's factor out a 25 from there, there, and there. Both terms in the, in the numerator and the denominator. If we do that, I come up with this. Pi minus 2 over pi. Now, if you're, if you're not good at factoring this, that's, go ahead, just crank it all out. 25 times pi minus 50 divided by 25 pi. But you've got to learn to take the shortcuts. That's where, well, that's where the speed is. So I'm going to pull up this calculator right here. And I'm just going to look at this. Pi, oops, messed up there. Clear, clear, let's say pi minus 2. And I'm going to divide that by pi. And I can see 36 point th and one third, roughly. And to the nearest percent, I guess I would call that a 36% chance. So just a little bit more than a one third chance that this P lands in the shaded region and not in the square. Well, let's try another geometric probability. Here, my point P, well, given that it lands somewhere on this figure, not out here, what are the odds that it lands in this 
piece, the shaded part of the triangle. Hmm. Well, let me see. I've got uh, I've got a measure here, 14. I've got um, this segment I'm, well being bisected right here. I've got a side of six and a side of 12. So I'm going to set this up this way. The probability that random point lands here, well, that's going to be the area of the, this triangle over the area of the entire or overall triangle. And we know area of a triangle is one-half base times height. We could substitute right away, and we could say, all right, this one has got a base of 6 and a height which is half of 14, or 7. The overall triangle, one-half base times height. Now, I could calculate these numbers out. I could divide out the one-halves. One-half goes into one-half one time. 6 goes into 12 twice, 7 goes into 14 twice. I could simplify this, well, I guess, into that. Um, well, I guess that's 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 2 is 4. This is going to be the probability of 1 fourth, also known as 25%. 25% chance of landing here. But wait, I selected this problem because it's pretty neat. Again, this is number 9. We could do this another way. How about noticing that this triangle and this triangle are similar? Well, they both share the angle at this vertex. They're right angles here. And um, I guess they are, and I've, let me see, they've got these, um, um, well, we also could use side angle, side similarity, but we have angle, angle to say the triangles are similar. So let's establish this. This triangle and this triangle are similar by angle, angle. And then the ratio of their corresponding sides, the 6 is to 12, as 1 is to 2. So their corresponding areas must be in the ratio of 1 squared to 2 squared, which gives us 1 to 4. Again, a 1 fourth probability that the random point lands on this shaded piece right here, the Wii triangle. Now, how about a regular polygon, in this case an octagon, inscribed in a circle? You know, honestly, I don't know how big it is. Fact is, it doesn't matter. These figures are all similar. What are the odds that a point landing inside this circle, which means on this figure, what are the odds that it lands in the octagon? Looks pretty high, doesn't it? Well, let's calculate it. And again, we don't know the size of this figure. So what are we going to do? We'll start out here. I'm just going to say, define our terms, the probability that it lands in the shaded area, after all, it could land in these segments, is you know, the area of the octagon divided by the area of the circle, this circle. I need to relate the octagon to the circle. I do know that the area of all regular polygons is one-half AP. And then I'm going to remember from the last section, that's 11.6, where we discussed regular polygons at great length. I need to know the apothem and the radius. I know this angle 22 and a half, that's half the central angle. And I've got these three critical measurements. A is for apothem, R is the radius, and I'm using B, and I'm calling that the half side, if you will. It's half the length of each of these sides. So with this, we can employ our trig. And um, you know, if, if you're troubled by all this variable, you could just set the radius equal to 1. It'll all work out. But for the challenge, we're going to do this with variables. So R is our radius. After all, we don't know how big it is. So, let's you know, find expressions for the apothem. For 22 and a half, the adjacent over the hypotenuse. That's going to be the cosine. So the cosine of 22 and a half is A over R. Rewrite, uh, rewriting for A, which is multiplying both sides by R. A, the apothem is r times cosine 22 and a half. We're done there. 
Let's have a look at B. Opposite the 22 and a half degree angle, opposite over hypotenuse, we all know that is sine. Same thing, we're going to multiply by R there. So B, and that is this segment right here, this piece, is R times the sine of 22 and a half. Now if I double that, I get a full side. So I'm going to say S is twice R times sine of 22 and a half. And of course there's eight sides there. So I'll multiply the side times eight, and that's going to give me my perimeter, 16R times the sine of 22 and a half. So we're done. We've got an apothem, or expression for apothem, expression for perimeter. We'll just substitute into our formula for the area of an octagon. And um, guys, there we go. Direct substitution, apothem, perimeter. Now we can clean it up a little bit here. And uh, see, we're not going to use a calculator until we have to. I've got this one half. I can divide that out of here. And um, I can multiply. See, I've got an R and an R. That would be R squared. So cleaning it up a little bit, I've got 8R squared times cosine 22 and a half sine 22 and a half. Well, that's the area of the octagon. Well, we just need to uh, divide by the area of the circle. Area of the circle is pi r squared, and we're leaving r as a variable, so here goes. <laughs> it's easy as that. Now, you see the beauty here. I've got my r squareds. You see it doesn't matter what the radius is. They're just going to divide out nicely there. And now it's time, well, let's just take our calculator. We see we've got, where is that calculator? There we go. And, um, and we all know how this one works. We'll just go, well, we'll just go front, no, just forward. Eight times 22 and a half cosine equals, okay, times 22.5 sine equals. So that's eight times the cosine 22 and a half times the sine of 22 and a half divide by pi. Let's do that. Divide by pi equals, hey, look at that. 90 to the nearest tenth, it looks like 0. .0. So we have a 90% probability that this point P is going to land inside the shaded part, which is, of course, the regular octagon and not out here. Just a 10% chance of being out in these little segments right here. Not bad. Well, that will conclude our this video, and um, maybe we'll add some more in the future.